So, hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a very, very Canadian episode of CA Esports. As you guys can tell, um, we're trying something a little bit different today. We have our very, very Canadian guest with us, uh, the guys who do Ready, Set, Pwn. So for those of you who don't know, if you're checking them out for the first time, they sort of do kind of what we do, but for the Vancouver Titans. Um, you guys have been doing it for a year now, correct? Since season two? Yeah, well, yeah, just over a year. The moment the Vancouver Titans were announced legit as a team, yeah. uh, RSP spun up. First episode, go back and listen to it. It's like 15 minutes long, 10 yeah. minutes of music, five minutes of me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so with uh, always, obviously, you can tell I'm Spencer, uh, my co host Chris. We've been doing this before. So, I don't, I don't know if you guys want to give a quick little introduction um, and you go from there. Sure. Uh, so I am Chris at Light Force. I am the host and founder of the, the Ready Set Home podcast, the guy who actually spun it up oh so long ago when the Vancouver Titans franchise uh, was announced. And the very first co host of two that joined me is with me here today. That's uh, Alex or at Omni Strife on Twitter. The other co host who couldn't make it is Sam at another Sam Chan. That's probably a good thing. Because uh, he has this thing about uh, everything Toronto. Yeah, is he the one who always talks trash about us? Because every time, <laughs> oh, I swear, I'll listen to like... I couldn't make it today, every, unfortunately. Yeah, every yeah. time I listen to you guys, there's one person who keeps bashing the Toronto Defiant. And I was like, I told Life Force when we first spoke, I was like, I want him on because I want to talk to him about the Defiant. Yeah, no, Sam is not here only because his day job has been hectic. Yeah, and, trying and trying to make it work, it was just, we couldn't couldn't swing it. But yeah, uh, see, yes. I was gonna say that I understand bashing the Toronto Defiant a little bit less so, but that's that's fine. Um. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So games are coming up. First couple of games uh, this weekend, I believe Vancouver has two games. Is that correct? Right. And, right. That's right. And Toronto has one. So I, I feel like there are definitely some interesting matchups coming up this weekend. I think for Vancouver, we have LA Gladiators and LA Valiant. So how are you guys feeling about those two games? Yeah, I can start. Like the first game we were up against the Gladiators, they are a much different team from what we saw last year. But a lot of people predicting them to be kind of middle of a pack team. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot, lots of unknowns. Everybody is not really sure what the meta is going to be. The Gladiators definitely changed their uh, identity in my eyes as more more of a tank-focused team. Uh, team yeah they were last year as, as you're uh now the toronto Devi defined uh sure for aptly named uh the dps in the world the two yeah. dps in the world now they have the yeah. the tanks the the two tanks in the world i think in uh, og and and space yeah. but outside yeah. of that of course they have um Go big goose and shaz but their dps lineup is kind of weird and about the vancouver titans we all know about the fisher story but uh it, it's definitely when looking at the other games, it's definitely looks like one of the more interesting games. Yeah. And we're looking forward to this. Uh, we predict, we, we did speak about this game yesterday. We, we do think that Titans should be on top unless something mm. really crazy goes on there. Valiant, outside of Custa, I think nobody is really that high on that team. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was definitely the looking Have you guys that. not seen Plat Chat's latest videos? Yeah, I did see it today. I mean, yeah, he kind of bamboozled these guys into <laughs> putting them, I think, 13th. No, I, I think the challenge here for us is the fact that we still need to uh, prepare for two teams, uh, unlike some other teams that, like Toronto, that needs to only play one. Uh, so that might be a challenge. But other than that, like, we're yeah, excited for one this of them's Valiant. So. <laughs> yeah, it is. But, but I don't want to say like those kind of that kind of mindset puts no, me to worry, but yeah, yeah. No, I know which. Um, so I so I'm assuming you guys just you just recorded your episode yesterday. Is that one up? Yeah. So the podcast uh, goes to live high noon every Wednesday. So we recorded okay. when we say last night. Uh, we recorded Tuesday, and that might be breaking what is the fourth wall here by saying last night. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. So we'll put a link in that description below. So if anyone's interested yeah. in listening to their perspective, they can check it out. But um, in terms of just this weekend, yeah, I think you guys are in pretty good shape. Um, I actually had Gladiators pretty high. Like, I think that's going to be a really, really interesting game to watch. I think you're going to learn a lot about both teams from watching it. Um, the obvious question mark in the room is their DPS lineup. But I think when you have a tank line as strong as the Gladiators and then the support line as strong to back them up, like so much space is created. I think that you can 
you can still be very, very successful with a somewhat underwhelming tank line, sim or sorry, DPS lineup, simply because the tanks are creating so much space that they just, they just allow so much room for your DPS to work. And obviously all it takes is Bird Ring to, you know, reach 75% of a season one self. Mm. Um, and I'm actually pretty high on Mirror. Now, maybe that's because I, I always like the rank stars. Like, I always like guys who are, like, really, really good yeah, on rank yeah. and really, really good on the stream and hit, you know, number one in the world and then transition to the Overwatch League. Um so I am pretty high on him. So I, I think they're a really good team. But yeah, as you can tell from our power rankings, I have Vancouver um, at number two. I, I think that the Fisher thing is going to work, knock on wood. Um, I have a lot of faith in that team. So I do think Vancouver takes both of them. And yeah, I don't have Valiant at 13. So I'm pretty confident in that. <laughs> yeah, and I'd also say it really depends on does the is the meta that Al is going to be a part of, is that going to be you know, heavily favoring uh, interplay between tanks and DPS. But if we have a, like a meta where you have a lot of DPS taking off angles and they don't need interplay with tanks as much, then maybe LA, um, LA Gladiator's tank line won't be as, as much use as it could be. Mm -hmm. The One of the local uh, television networks uh, went into uh, essentially the facility that the Vancouver Titans are working in uh, out west here. And as far as meta goes, the scrim that was filmed, there was actually yeah. a couple different matches, uh, was what we've already heard. Rhine, Diva, Reaper, mm -hmm. May, uh, I think it was Lucio and Moira. And Moira, yeah. Lucio and Moira, yeah. Really, yeah. And, yeah. and so, you know, with a, a Lucio-Moira combination, I would gather we're probably going to be seeing more of a, a close-knit support tank relationship yeah the fact that may and, and reaper can self-heal to some respect yeah that might be what would be the closest to a, a dive comp we might see but I, again i still feel we're going to see a, a close-knit uh 6v6 presuming mm -hmm. again what we saw on television was was actually what will be uh, shown uh, this yeah. weekend uh, on, uh, on YouTube. And I think that actually fits your guys' you know, both LA actually as well as Vancouver pretty well, mm -hmm. but because I know there was some concern about Janu and his ability to flex to other off tanks outside of Diva, but I mean everyone knows Janu's Diva's top tier, so uh, and Fisher can play Ryan. So I think that's a really interesting um, mm -hmm. composition. It's a little unfortunate that Twilight stuck on Moira duty, but uh, I, I think they're going to be fine. Moira well, were... duty I mean, it, it, it does suck, I, I won't deny, but, mm -hmm. you know, all it would take is a switch away from Lucio to a Baptiste, and now we have Rui Hong and Twilight. Exactly. Well, Rui oh, Hong. That would be nice. Oh, that interesting. Be nice. Interesting. interesting. Will that come back? <laughs> that Please bring come uh, back. Anna, Anna Zenyatta. Please bring it back. Anna that Zenyatta would, would fit your guys' team so well. Ooh, that would be so, be I mean, yeah. Things get a little bit spicy. A team can um, dream. Now, I did have a, I want to get your opinion on Fisher and not like the typical, like, oh, is Fisher going to do good or something like that? Mm -hmm. But do you guys think that Fisher is going to last on the Vancouver Titans in the long run? You know, so, I, mean, I don't think there's a debate that it's he's been really good or it, not. Um, but, you know, he has had like a, a bunch of short stints mm -hmm. and it seems like could be like a short term play by Toronto, but I just want to get your guys' opinion on it. So looking at, uh, at Fisher joining the Vancouver Titans, I mean, let's let the cat out of the bag. This is the fourth professional team in, in yeah. three professional seasons mm -hmm. uh, yeah. in a league where player movement doesn't occur that fast. Mm -hmm. There is baggage. It's been acknowledged. In fact, uh, we had an opportunity to sit down with uh, Pajan this weekend, our head okay. coach, uh, Alfred Devera, who's the head of uh, team operations and communications as well. And this weekend, they both actually said that, you know, Fisher is, is, the first one into the room uh, when yeah. it comes to analyzing mm. play, the last one out when it comes to over uh, watching video, uh, he's asking for and accepting advice on how to become better. Um, Alfred was the one who actually said it. it's like Fisher's playing with a chip on his shoulder that he mm. wants to show people that yes, you know, people say I'm good. Well, I am. And here's yeah. what I can do. And mm. let's consider, I mean, if the Vancouver Titans support line was able to keep bumper alive for, you know, an entire regular season. Yeah, that's, yeah. I can't see that being an issue with a, a, an aggressive player such as Fisher, but the wary I'd give Fisher the edge on is he, I mean, in game, 
tends to have maybe a, a little bit higher uh, metal acuity than bumper wood. Yeah. Well, there was yeah. an interesting article that just came out where they like interviewed, mm -hmm. uh, it was a uh, Yiska, I believe, who does Yiska that. Yiska did it. Yeah. yeah. Um, where the, they interviewed 10 head coaches on what they thought about bumper. And it seemed like actually surprisingly negative towards how good of a main tank he actually was. Um, right. But yeah, I always make the comparison. Whereas like, if this team plays around Fissure the way that they played around bumper, like it, I don't necessarily assuming he stays right. Like it's an upgrade. Like this team actually improved. This was already arguably yeah. the best team mm -hmm. last year. Um, I know the finals didn't necessarily go your guys' way, but you still won the winner bracket. And then right. I would say you improved on one of your major needs, which is again, mm -hmm. if you take that bumper, wasn't actually mechanically that gifted of a main tank, and that simply his team coordination and, and support line is right. what sort of kept them up. Um, things are actually looking pretty high. And I never really bought the whole argument of, well, the team chemistry, what are they going to do? You know, I'm like, okay, yeah, I know. But they threw Tizzy in, literally in the playoffs with no warning whatsoever. And um, and he was still able to, you know, like I said, right. win their grand finals and, and, and go on the way. So I think that uh, I actually really like the Fissure move. I'm also like a really big fan of people who like gamble and take chances. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, Definitely. assuming it works, it's going to be good. Definitely a high risk, high reward uh, scenario, of Fisher. But like you said, Vancouver are accustomed to playing with a high maintenance tank. And in my eyes, a lot of people discuss whether Bumper was kind of a thrower or yeah. or he had the entire team, you know, support him and put up all all the resources to him, and that's why he was able to be successful. In my eyes, and I always claim that on on the pod, it, it's actually the other way around. I think Vancouver Titans was exactly successful exactly because of the reason he was able to get in there like a mm -hmm. sort of a wrecking ball and, and just yeah. make everyone pressured as hell and and that later became the go the de facto uh goats style right and in the super mm -hmm. aggressive goats but we can yeah. later talk about what happened when 222 became a thing and they brought in uh tz because uh bumper was not a great orissa because that style mm. of play wasn't yeah. as good at creating space and moving forward exactly. but guess what uh a fisher is way more flexible uh, than Bumper mm -hmm. is in the main tank position. Yeah. I think he actually uh, accompanies Janu's uh, hero pool quite well. Yeah. The thing is, though, that we all like are are hoping here as as either Van Vancouver Titans fans or like it's our second team in, in in Canadian fans or whatever. Will he stay? Will he uh, uh, keep at it like we we are now? So we don't really yeah. have much to rely on. But what we do have is like Lightforce Force said, uh, a lot of the signaling is rather positive. Uh, that he does seem to have a chip on his shoulder, and he's making the world know about it. The, the bumper jacket. <laughs> the bumper jacket. Yeah, yeah that was yeah, awesome. Yeah. I love. Yeah, again, like, the, the game and greet like went nuts watching him walking around with that on. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah, yeah no, I love that stuff. Um, I think. So what were you saying, Chris? If there's one thing I just would want to say about Bumper that actually um, really resonated with me there is that I think he he really he was able to um, make a positive impact even though he would like run in and die uh, because what teams are based on like how good they are isn't how well they play necessarily when they have those um, set plays but what happens when those set plays go out the window and kind of mess the team up and they have to kind of react a little more um quickly and on the spot and bumper would force teams to do, get into those areas yeah now by absolutely going out of his way and just swing getting made a pick and dying he yeah. forced teams to go into areas that they had never experienced before and that was what caused many occasions where he carried a yeah. fight and killed like three yeah but i mean fisher yeah. is that kind of play style as well right, right? you just yeah. argue mm -hmm. and i always use the in terms of like um because I think there's some of the mentality where when Fisher went to other teams, it was sort of like they were struggling teams that almost needed him. You know what I mean? Like he goes to the Gladiators. They were having a rough start. He was kind of like, well, okay, this is my team. I'm the man. He goes to the Soul Dynasty after they were so disappointing in season one, maybe with some of the same mentality. And I always use, and I spoke to, again, Omni about this, or not Omni, sorry, Life Force about this before. Um, whereas I kind of relate to like a big traditional sports guy. Um, sort of like the Phil Kessel situation in, in, in Toronto. And I don't know if any of you guys follow hockey. 
Uh, but Phil Kessel was, again, someone in Toronto who at one point people said he was overpaid. People said he didn't care anymore. He, you know what I mean? He, didn't, he, was, bad, he was bad in the locker room, uh, could never make the playoffs. And then they traded him to the Pittsburgh Penguins, who had Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin, and it was a well-run organization. Marc-Andre Fleury, you know, they had Marilyn Lemieux running the show. And then all of a sudden they went back-to-back Stanley Cups. Even if you go back to last year in Toronto with Kawhi Leonard, right? People said he mm-hmm. quit on the team. People said he was, he was toxic. You know, he, he was a bad leader. Um, but you brought him in, you know, DeMar DeRozan was a fan favorite. People loved him. How could you trade DeMar DeRozan for Kawhi Leonard? Um, but then it's like, yeah, I know, but at some point Kawhi is just better. You know what I mean? Like he, he was what Toronto needed. He's just better than DeMar DeRozan. As much as I hated to see him go, he, I mean, he did leave after the year, but he brought us a championship. Um, so well, I, I look at... I'm fine if Fisher gets us a championship and leaves. After. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fisher gets you a championship, leaves, and then you got like Megan Runaway, who's just turning 18, fits perfectly, right? It's a little mm-hmm. bit... like oh, That's interesting. Um, but yeah, so so I really like, I like it from that perspective. I, you know, you bring Ryu Jae-hung, uh, who obviously has history with Fisher. He's obviously really well-respected. And again, like this, is, this isn't his team. This was the second best team last year. They already have an established culture and a way of playing. So there's no real like... Yeah, I, I understand that he would be willing to work and and you know go along with the system because it was a really good system. So why not? Exactly. Now, what about Toronto? Toronto's a little bit. Um, it's a little bit different, you know. We have two teams. Uh, we have Toronto Fire versus Paris facing off. Uh, Spencer, what are your what are your thoughts on that? Well, I was just before we move on to Toronto. I was if you guys had any more closing thoughts about Vancouver before I moved on. Um, just I, I didn't want to go on my little sure. rant and then cut them off you know what i mean this is uh we do have the vancouver experts on here so why don't we get them <laughs> very true i'll give them the final word well the the one thing i, I you know will mention uh one being a vancouver titans podcast where we're biased towards the titans we're probably far more optimistic than the community tends to be yeah well i mean hey, i put a number two so I'm but <laughs> i same boat. i actually believe if you withdraw from the whole oh fisher's going to implode the chemistry has gone bad and you know er, the worst case scenario which seems to be uh, the bulk of of the community yeah there are many that are sleeping on the the dps side of the titans i mean stitch is a great example of a player who can come in and i think be second to none outside of his partner which would be hacksaw yeah and if a meta shift were to occur where stitch can get involved you know, people should watch out. Now, the proof would be that, oh, well, look at what Stitch did last season. He only got brought in a handful of times, uh, generally in the fourth map. We call it Rialtoing here in Vancouver. Yeah. The Titans would go up 3 nothing, and then you would go and see them just flex on map four doing some yeah. stupid stuff. Em- emoting on the payload. Yeah, like even yeah. if Stitch were to have come in and, and brought his A game, he had, yeah, bumper emoting on a payload, diving off the map as uh, Hanzo or Widow or... Like, it, unfortunately, it wasn't conducive to actually seeing him out play. But when Stitch came in as Sombra in the Sombra Goats meta that we saw sort of through stage two, stage three, Dube was on fire. And the few times we got to see him on a McCree or a Soldier, I mean, he's hit 10 DPS for a reason, and he can hit hard. Yeah. And you, you can imagine, like, with uh, Goats being a thing for all well, three stages, uh, really, two and a half. He, he has been hot, idle for a while, but he has been screaming right now with the team regularly, so mm-hmm. he should be hotter. Uh, just to add to that, like, final words about Vancouver and, and the doubters, I don't think yeah. there's a lot of teams, and, and a lot of people put um, Atlanta above Vancouver and NYXL above Vancouver. I don't think that uh, there there's a lot of teams out there maybe outside of the shock that have a top three off tank, a top three main support in the league, a top three flex support in the league. So you've got like, and a top three uh, flex DPS in the league. I would say, don't forget about Hawks You have like four MVP caliber players and- Arguably a top three main tank in the league if you want to go that far. Yeah, if he he, uh, plays as well as he can be. So I'm, I'm- I don't see them imploding or or struggling or yeah. coming like outside of the top five personally. So yeah, I'm, I'm not as worried about it as others might be. Yeah, no. So I mean, I think like I said, all of us had them going two zero. Um, I had them really high in the power rankings. I think Hero Pool actually fits his team pretty well because, like you said, Seaman Sue is also like a really jack of all trades player, right? Like it's something he can mm-hmm. do a lot there. He even came in and played a bit of Reaper for them in the playoffs. So so yeah. So I think they're gonna be really good. Um, and then now, with that being said, uh, so you guys are good, we can move on to the Toronto Defiant and talk about the uh, 
the fun stuff you know what i mean so um the fun <laughs> stuff. So, yeah. well, harder to tell yeah exactly <laughs> um maybe not as good um but yeah so they're playing the paris eternal this week it's the only one game to break down um now this is the paris eternal without not even just um sparkle but i don't even think Han- hannibin hasn't isn't of age yet either right not he misses yet, the first no. four games so in my opinion we got a bit of a luck in the draw i mean knock on wood right game hasn't happened yet but i i, I do see toronto defiant taking this one even if just off the fact that this is the weakest Paris you're probably ever going to see um, home opener on the road. So right. that's my thought. I think where are they playing their game in New York? New so York. I think they'll have kind of like a, not really a, a home home base advantage, but they will have more, more fans in the crowd, especially having rebuild around s- such, uh, you know, mem- you know, recognizable names and, and uh, mm-hmm. sure for, and a lot of the fan favorites, uh, in the crowd uh on paper i i see toronto winning this game i think the roster is is built uh, way better you you guys have done a magnificent job not only in rebranding sort of the image yeah. of of the team oh, let me just get oh, out of the way here <laughs> keep it <laughs> and, in keep uh, it in. yeah he kind of he kind of looks like sure for when you had that crazy yeah. white hair on top mm-hmm. and uh yeah back to my point uh so outside of maybe beast who we all know is the big unknown with the team yeah. and maybe the main support that i'm not really in love with in kellex and rocky outside of it i think that the, the roster is definitely solid uh and I, I expect them to uh beat um beat paris eternal paris, yeah yeah I, I also want to shed light on um the head coaches too this is a big one for fefe you know, mm. past Paris Eternal head coach coming to Toronto. So, you know, he wants to beat. Right. He wants to beat Paris. He wants to show him what's up. Yeah. But um, Rush, Paris's new coach, he has a pretty good track record. So he's won three out of the fast, three out of the past four contenders tournaments yeah. in Korea. And out of the past five, the other two were second places. So oh, yeah. this guy clearly has a good track record. And we, we don't quite... Obviously, I don't really watch Contenders Korea, so I'm not quite sure what the style is like um, for his teams there. But it's definitely something not to sleep on, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. And I think that when you... But the other issue is, like, as much as I want to give their coaching staff credit, that is something that you sort of see more towards the latter half of the year, as well as, you know, Rush was brought in with Sparkle, right? That was sort of... They were they were combined, and, and same with Hanneman. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. So I think that... I definitely agree that you have some good points. Like I, I think as much as I trashed on Paris in our power ranking, there is upside to them. Um, I just don't think Toronto Defiant is going to get that upside in the first game of the season, right? You know, this was stage, I guess you don't do stages anymore, but the equivalent of stage three, stage four, mm-hmm. maybe a bit of a different scenario, but uh, yeah. Do we know if uh, Paris scrimmed out in Asia or in Korea or? They're based in New Jersey. And I think oh, they right. actually have been in A as far as I'm aware yeah. of. Yeah, because... From what I hear, like different regions have different metas now, and it would have been Which interesting be cool. to see like a non-mirror match. Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's the first game though. Everybody's going to be super shaky and excited. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, crazy that's out for sure. there. So, think, Life Force, um, what's your what's your prediction here? Just before we move on to just the pros and cons of Toronto. Yeah, so I mean, I I don't disagree with anything that is said. I would have mm-hmm. had Toronto beating Paris for a variety of reasons, most of which you've shared. Um, I shared on our podcast when we were talking about uh, Toronto and where they've had in the power rankings, how I have a soft spot. Um, one, because it's the Canadian flag that's been slapped on that team as yeah. part of the rebrand. So there's yeah. some, you know, mm-hmm. credit there. And then uh, something that I, you know, shared with you guys uh, when we were chatting as we were setting this up. Uh, another soft spot for, uh, you know, over at media and the fact that they've, they've engaged with us out West yeah. here. Probably, well, I wouldn't say more than the, the Vancouver Titans have more recently. Yeah, recently. <laughs> but last last year, I probably had more conversations and more interaction uh, with Toronto yeah. ownership than I did Vancouver. So that all aside, actually, what happens in, in game, uh, I'm I'm high on Nevix. I actually think I the, he was unfortunately in a tough situation in San Francisco with who was in front of him, whether it be Super, whether it be Joy, whomever. Yeah. Um, I think that that is a really good pickup. Uh, I like the fact that you have, uh, you know, Sherfor, who I think can can still fill a role quite adequately. Like I, I see a lot of positives, and then Paris is just in a tough spot. Like I think yeah. they're going in the right direction, but age is the limiting factor right now, yeah. and as a result, mm-hmm. they're in this sort of period of 
question marks and unknown that they simply have to sort of survive. I mean, to use the the sports example, it would be akin to, uh, and I'm a, I'm a hockey fan, you know, your top two blue liners going down with injury and you're just trying to hold the fort and get a yeah. 500 record until they come back. I almost think that that might be what Paris's approach will be. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I give this to Toronto and I, I think it would be, I'm going to say, you know, 3-1. I mean, it's not a complete stomp, but yeah. uh, probably not one that they'd be worried about. But they, they did remove that rule right now where if it if it goes 3-0, there's no longer a fourth map. It just ends yeah, 3 Yeah, everything's first to 3-0. Three. Three. Yeah, so, which is nice. Um, But yeah, so They're talking nice. a bit about the, kind of going off of what Omni said and, and, and going off of your point, just in terms of like looking at the roster, um, because I actually, I'm actually pretty high on Kellex. Um, I think Beast is, is the obvious question mark that, I mean, none of us have really seen him play in a while, right? Like, because he was supposed right. to go to Chain Do, and then um, I think it was Silk, Silk Fred pulled out, right? And he was like, I don't want to be the only English speaking player. So that sort of happened. Right. So no one's really seen him in a while. Uh, Kellex, I actually think, has been in a, in a pretty poor situation with the whole like Aim God thing and the Boston Uprising. And it was Boston. always a mixed roster. Um, but like, let's not forget that he was a part of that team that went, you know, 10 and 0 in stage three right. in season one. Um, and then when he did play with Denmark, which was, you know, a, you know, an, a one language team in the world cup. And I don't want to put too much emphasis on the world cup, but like that compounded with what we've seen in the past, he actually performed really well. And again, mm-hmm. we spoke to Jay, Jay had nothing but like really positive things about yeah. Kellex as a main support and how talented he was and how flexible he was, which again, I think works really well with the whole hero pool situation, right? Because mm-hmm. you're not, you don't just have someone who's like, oh, he's a really good Lucio, but his mercy mm-hmm. and Baptiste isn't that great. From what we've heard, you know, his mercy is fantastic. His Lucio is really good. And, um, he was able to flex to the Baptiste in that situation. So I'm really looking forward to seeing him and Kareem play together. I think that's going to be a pretty good support line. Obviously, I, I think sure four fits the hero pool perfectly. Uh, his ability to play both hit scan and, and flex DPS heroes is, is exactly what you want. Um, I think agility is going to be interesting to watch this year. I have a lot of hope only because he's, I mean, he's Canadian, right? And I, and I like the whole, he's only 19 years old. Um, and now that he doesn't have to play like Brigida and stuff like that, I think he still has potential to, to play pretty well. And um, I love Nevix too. So, so all that, I think Nevix fits Beast perfectly. Like if you want to set up a main tank, off tank duo, I think that that works really well. But um, yeah, I think the big question is going to be how does Beast Halo perform this year? And, and what I is think, that? Um... Uh, have we talked about Logics? Do you think know if Logics is going to start at all? I I actually think Logics. I think what a lot of people assumed was Sure Four be Hit Scan, Agilities would be Flex DPS, and then Logics would only play if it's like a double sniper scenario. But when right. we talked to Jay, he was pretty adamant about Sure Four can play almost anything. So I think if you get that like Reaper May scenario, you might actually see Logics on the Reaper, Sure Four on the May. Now, I don't want to, I'm not going to, that's not, you know, there's no leaks. I don't know that for sure. That's not, but when Jay was sort of adamant about, yeah, like, Surefor can play multiple different heroes. I think you might see Logics on Reaper and, and Surefor play the May. I and also think, like, like Farah and Genji. Sorry, continue. No, uh, I mean, like, when you do classify them both as hit scan specialists, I still think, while there is overlap, I think, like, um, Logics is really good on the McCree, even better a little bit than Surefire. Surefire takes a while to get mm-hmm. hot on the McCree or maybe Ash if he plays it. But if you need to, like, a, you know, make a substitution if one of them is not hot, I'm sure, like, Logics has always been uh, popping off, even when he was brought in really late into the season. So it, it, he's actually one of the low key uh, DPS that I really, really like. So I think it's a great pickup for um, uh, Toronto as well. If he is facing off, um, if he is playing, he'll be facing off against. Uh, I hope I don't botch the pronunciation. Is he or X X Z? I think it's Z. 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 Just yeah. Z. Yeah, because I think uh, Z is more of a uh, like a sniper, like hit scan specialist. Mm-hmm. So um, if they if the both of them are playing, I'm definitely gonna be looking at it towards seeing. Right. The outcome of that matchup play and, out. And then you have the same situation there with Soon, who's also kind of a flex and also a hit yeah. gun specialist, but no. Yeah, exactly. no, so I think, I think that, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that whole thing plays out. Um, Just it, sorry, always an interesting matchup between uh, Soon and Sure for the very yeah. old timers in this uh, <laughs> Overwatch esports scene. Yeah, Sure for like 26. I remember I looked that up. I was surprised. I was like, damn, he's getting geezer. up there. For, for <laughs> esports, right? Yeah, I know. Who would have thought? He's 28. Like, time, so it's Jay Hong, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah Jay Hong. Yeah. Jay Hong, too. 
Although, I mean, again, unless, yeah, unless you run into like a Ana Zenyatta meta, I don't know how much play time. That's the issue is with right. Jaehung, right? It's yeah, he'll just so he'll come in as off tank. He's, he's yeah, played exactly. that role too. Now, when Fisher leaves, Jay Hong's going to be the one who substitutes the main tank position. Or so. you, Jay Hong, yeah. on the Winston, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so, where did you guys actually end up having Toronto? Just before we before we close things out here for your power rankings. So, uh, we had Toronto come in collectively. There were three of us. We had Toronto come in at 14th. Okay. Now, how we came to that 14, I had the Toronto Defiant actually at 13, so only slightly above. Uh, both Omni as well as uh, Sam the Hater, as he's probably known around the yeah. six. Uh, the two of them had the Toronto Defiant at 16. But... And, okay, go ahead. Omni. I'll just I'll just mention the fact that I, with these power rankings came out before Hero Pools, and I think yeah. uh, Hero Pools kind of bumped them up. And that that was the point that I was about to mention is I believe Toronto moves up. I think even Sam the Hater would give Toronto more love, knowing that Hero Let's Pool see. add a, a dynamic that, you know, one, we didn't consider, but two, teams with much more flexible rosters would be rewarded. Yeah. No, I think so too. I think 14 is actually a pretty good spot. Like I said, I just, I got so frustrated seeing people put them at 19, 20, talking about how bad their tank line was and then talk about how Atlanta was the second best team in the league. And I was like, okay, guys, like, let's just take it easy here. It's probably the same people that are putting the team that lives in a pineapple at the bottom of the sea higher, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to say, especially at that middle point where you have teams like yes. Dallas, yeah. uh, Mayhem. Nobody really knows. Those teams are really interchangeable if you look at different uh, power rankings, really. Yeah. No, yeah, there's a clear, like, I felt like bottom... I feel like there's a clear top 11, Justice, I, was, I would say. Yeah. yeah, Justice Justice was like, I was super high on Justice when I thought it was going to be May Hanzo, and then it's not May Hanzo anymore, and I'm like, mm. Ooh. I don't know how they're going to do, um, especially with Hero Pools. But again, mm -hmm. I, I'm so high on Corey, but that's a you know, different conversation for a different day. Um, so yeah, I think we covered everything that I was yeah. going to cover. So um, so Chris, where can, we, where can we find you guys if yeah. anybody wants to listen to uh, Raise Up Home? Yeah, so the easiest place to find us is readysetpwn.com. And as far as listening to the podcast, uh, while all the episodes are published on the, the website, uh, you can find them in pretty much every podcast application that is out there. Mm -hmm. If you happen to find a podcast application that doesn't have RSP available in it, let me know and I would be surprised. It'll Just uninstall. Just uninstall, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but uh, if for some reason podcasts are new to people because i know the that uh, you guys uh, push your your episodes out on on youtube youtube it's very accessible um go to readysetpwn.com slash listen it'll walk you through all the steps um as we are not yet a, a video podcast we are purely auditory in form i'm surprised guys face so, ideas, so low key on. face reveal today yeah face yeah. reveal, it's reveal at, it at, is uh, in fact, hundred uh, subscribers yeah, in our in our last episode, we did share that uh, that Omni and I would be joining, and if anyone wanted to to see us, this was the 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 best way to go about it. But I mean, we're the two of us are at all the Vancouver Titans events. Yeah, uh, you know, we're we're known within the community. I was actually uh, commenting to to Omni how uh, I have people coming up to me who don't even listen to the podcast but know me. And I'm kind of curious as to That's how horrible. my personality has surpassed, <laughs> you know, to such a way, the place that people know who Chris at Light Force happens to be in Vancouver yeah. Titans events without even listening to RSB. That's, yeah, really cool. that's pretty sweet. <laughs> and uh, Alex, how about yourself? Uh, same goes. You can find me on Twitter at Omnistrife uh, on our Discord. We comment a lot there. Uh, for me personally, it's not my face reveal. I think yeah, it was oh, last you're... year when I came on uh, High Noon podcast, and that's that, right. that was the one. So that's the second time actually. Not a lot has changed from there. Uh, but yeah, on on the Discord and over at Twitter at Omnistrife. Yeah, and we'll put all those links, like I said, in the description below. So if any of you guys are interested in checking them out, uh, the Twitter and all of that will be down in the description. So uh, yeah, just, I mean, thanks so much, guys, for coming on. It was a great talk. And uh, look forward to doing this again sometime, maybe for the Battle of Canada or something like that. Who knows? Yeah, 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 yeah but, totally. Uh, but best of luck. Yeah, are, are any of us going to Europe to watch that? Yeah, thank God, right? <laughs> Thank uh, God the Battle of Canada is in London, well, right? I'm going to be in Europe, so uh, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, if you are. You should, yeah, Still part it. of the Commonwealth, so. Okay, yeah. fair enough. I mean, I, we have we have U.S. Independence Day homestands. <laughs> yeah. But we can't play a Canadian team in Toronto or Vancouver. So. Not even in, the, yeah, in London, like literally across. The, okay, fair enough. Uh, maybe they'll sponsor us. Who knows? Right? We, we have a couple hmm. months to build up our fan base to the point where we get sponsored. Um, yeah. But awesome. Thanks so much, guys, for coming on. Like I said, if you guys enjoy, 
like and all that's in the description um but yeah as always enjoy stay toxic